We're back now with Mark Skoda, co-founder of the National Tea Party Federation, Jenny Beth Martin. She is co-founder of Tea Party Patriots and its national coordinator. Matt Kibbe is the president of FreedomWorks. He is also the co-author of Give Us Liberty, a Tea Party Manifesto. Well, that's a spooky word. <laughs> and Yvonne Donnelly, who is the national chair of the uh, 912 Project. Okay. Um, when I went into break, um, I, I told the story of how... Uh, somebody came up to a staff member of mine a couple of weeks ago when I was on the road, and they said, Glenn's got to get involved in the 912. We're, we're not leaders. We don't know what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And I actually, because I was a little stressed out at the time, I said to my staff member, call him up and just say, do they think I know what I'm doing? Um, I mean, we're all kind of, what were you before? What, what, what did, <laughs> where, did your, where does your expertise come I'm, from? I'm an economist by training. Okay. So I shouldn't know anything about grassroots organizations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't know anything about anything. Quite we, we learn it by doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. What is your training? I'm a computer programmer, okay. and I've been active in the Republican Party in the past. Okay. Not anymore right. than I used to be. And I've been running companies for the last 10 years, uh, although I did start off as a Teamster in 407 in Cleveland, Ohio. Whoa. So I understand the union mentality, yeah, you too. Do. You understand <laughs> that? I got an organization. And Yvonne? Well, I've done 25 years in not-for-profit, um, but professionally, I do coordinate volunteers and programming, um, and for a well-respected uh, that shall remain nameless. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a really like, respected organization. Yeah, like that. Uh, <laughs> right. Keep my job a little bit longer. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, okay. So, what are the challenges that you are hearing? Do, are you do you relate at all that people um, are sensing that? Uh, Cap and trade really doesn't even need to be passed. Um, you've got the financial regulation, health care regulation. They would say that Tea Party is meaningless. Um, the president who said, I'm going to listen to all points of view, has never. Has he met with any of you? <clears throat> no. Not recently? No. Yeah, okay. So you, this table probably represents 50 million people, maybe? Together. Probably more than that. Probably more than probably, that? Yeah. Um, at least like-minded um, uh, people never have, have you ever gotten a call from anyone in the White House? No. 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 Okay. So w w do you do you hear people saying, I mean, what's the point? Well, I, I, I look. I'm looking at your at your map matrix, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think that I'm getting some of that. I'm worried that health care passed. They didn't listen to us. They didn't listen to the public. But I would argue the opposite. That the Tea Party movement has had a tremendous impact far beyond any of us had a right to hope for. And it's not just the organizations, it's not just that you can get a million people on the mall, but we're driving public opinion. And if you look at the values that Jenny Beth laid out, the American people agree with us. Right. And they understand that this government's headed in the wrong direction. So I think we're past this point of feeling helpless. And I, right. my, the folks I talk to feel energized. And I would say that in November of last year, that's when people felt help, helpless and hopeless. And Matt and I and my co-founder, Mark Meckler, we had lots of conversations about that. And we've made sure that we've provided positive product, productive actions for people to take. I would say that it's not a question of hopeless. We're tired. We've been doing this. Uh, and I have a full-time job, and, and many of us do, and 912ers uh, across the board, again, volunteer-based organization, we do this on our, on our free time, if you will. So I wouldn't say hopeless, Glenn. I, I would say that we do get tired, but then something just, there's some gasoline on that fire right. that keeps us going. Mark. So. Yeah, I think, I, I, I truly believe that, as I look to the folks that I'm associated with, there is an extreme energy about these elections. I think that's what's right. really happening right now. In a year and a half, we went from what I call the visceral emotional elements of Tea Party rallies and signs to now we're actually making a difference. We're recruiting candidates. In fact, uh, I've got a woman running against the District 9 uh, incumbent Democrat, the Nancy Pelosi stamp. Her name is Char Charlotte Bergman. You, but you are, also, you are also running against the Republicans. I mean, I, I, That's right. I, I found it amazing yes, what indeed. Trent, a, a what Trent, party. What Trent Lott party. said. Um, we, we, the last thing we need is any of these Tea Party people in here. We don't need another Jim DeMint. If we come, we have to get, if they come in, we have to co-opt them immediately. I mean, the Republican Party right. is they, against you guys. They well, still don't get it. There's, there's, they there's, don't. there's three steps here. We've got to beat the Republicans, <laughs> and then we've got to beat the Democrats. But more important than November 2nd is November 3rd. Third. And whether or not this community can stay 
cohesive and stay vigilant. You know that you, you talk about I, the founders; they may, said you got to do that. May I ask? A, may I ask a question? Um, I think the most important thing, and the most probably probably the most amazing thing I have seen in my lifetime in America, I have never seen more Americans talk about the Constitution, right. mm -hmm. talk about the founding fathers. Right. There is, if you look at the best-selling books uh, on Amazon.com, you look at the books that have sold um, more than anything else, it's phenomenal, the wake-up that is mm -hmm. happening. We are reawakening the American people to, you're not going to go back to the old system that you were in. Right. We're off the couches Wait. and we're not going to sit well, down again. You know what? You said it. Look at what we've done in a year and a half. Look at what we've done. Americans across the board voted for change in 08. And then they got change, but they really didn't. They just got the same thing that was happening on speed. It, the same stuff was happening before yeah. President Obama was elected. Right. And so now they're saying we do want change, but what our change needs to be is restoring our founding principles. Okay, let me take a break, and I want to come back, and I want to spend some time on a couple of things. Um, they say that the Tea Party is dangerous. Um, uh, today I was called, and I don't remember what it was, but I was called a terrorist today. Um, and... Um, We've all been called racist at this table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you have a from the bottom up kind of thing, there will be people. I mean, NAACP, are you telling me there's not one single racist in mm -hmm. any chapter of the NAACP? I find that hard to believe. Are you superhuman? How does that happen? There is going to be a racist or two. The question is, do you purge yourself of them as much as you can? And the moment of danger that this map talks about, that fifth step where we are, is there a danger that you perceive and what do you do about it? We'll do that next.